Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. So we've completed our static analysis, but Caesar 2 also includes dynamic analysis capabilities. During this video, we'll take a look at the basics of the dynamic analysis module, and we'll see how to set up and run a simple modal analysis in order to calculate the natural frequencies for our piping system. This is something that's highly recommended for all pipelines. Right, so for dynamic analysis in Caesar 2, we need to access the dynamic analysis input module, which is this one here. This loads up the, in this case, empty dynamic analysis input because we haven't done anything yet. And this is where we can choose the first thing to do, choose the type of dynamic analysis we wish to perform. I'm going to do a modal analysis. This is the, the simplest type of dynamic analysis inside Caesar 2. But of course you can, as you see from the list, do harmonic uh, response spectrum analysis or even a full time history analysis. But of course for those we need additional input, which we won't cover here. So for modal analysis, where we just want to extract the natural frequencies of our system, we have four tabs, lumped masses, snubbers, control parameters and advanced. So for lumped masses and snubbers, these are for any additional uh, masses that we need to specify that you know wouldn't really have had much of an effect on the static analysis that wasn't necessary to define them for the static analysis but of course they may have much more significant effect in a dynamic analysis so we can define them here you can also define them inside the static analysis as well uh, for this example i'm not going to define any but you simply define the kilogram the direction kilogram mass the direction in which it acts and the node numbers at which this mass would be applied at. Similarly, for snubbers, uh, you can also define snubbers in the static input. You can specify restraint, define it as a snubber, specifying the stiffness, etc. Or you can define the snubber here in the dynamic analysis as well. Again, in this example, I'm not going to have any snubbers. So I'm going to go straight to page three, control parameters. And in here, well, we can choose various different settings. So um, I'll start with number two. I'll come back to number one in a second. But here we can define a stiffness factor for friction. Um, we've not used friction, or I haven't used friction in my examples previously, so there's no friction in the model anyway. But if there was, you could define a factor in here. Typically, this is a value of um, generally around about 1,000 is what you would specify in here. Any further information that you require, you can gain by pressing F1 on your keyboard to explain in more detail what that stiffness factor does. Then fields three and four, these work together to determine the maximum number of mode shapes or eigenvalues that are going to be calculated. You can either specify and tell Caesar 2, well, calculate me the first 10 lowest natural frequencies, or you can tell Caesar to keep calculating natural frequencies until you hit a, hit a frequency cutoff of, for example, let's say, let's go slightly more than 50 hertz, let's go say to 75 hertz. Number five is the mass model that will be used, lumped or consistent. Um, consistent is a, a more finer, refined um, version of the model. Uh, which gives more accurate results, but it takes a little bit longer, use a little bit more processing power. However, with a modern machine, it shouldn't be too much of a difference. So generally, consistent is the best option to take here. And number six is, do you wish to perform the Sturm sequence check on the computed eigenvalues to make sure you've computed all of the required eigenvalues? Sometimes, if you've got a particularly directionally dependent system, then the eigenvalues, the natural frequencies, may converge slightly out of order. So performing the Sturm sequence check, just make sure you haven't missed any. So I would advise setting that to yes. Which leaves me with number one, the static load case for the nonlinear restraint status. Um, this is actually not so important in my system because I don't have any nonlinear restraints, but all dynamic analysis in Caesar 2 is, is linear. So we must convert or linearize our nonlinear model if we have any nonlinearities. These could be such as a single acting restraint, uh, gaps, etc., any nonlinearities. 
and you simply select from the run load cases that you've run the load case that you wish to use for the nonlinear restraint status. And the load case that you select here, the status of any nonlinear restraints in that case is used. So, for example, if you have a restraint with a gap, if the gap is closed, then that restraint will be acting in this dynamic analysis. That leaves then only the advanced page and generally the advanced page you don't need to ch touch anything here unless you get a message from Caesar 2 telling you that that's needed but other than that I would advise to leave the advanced parameters as the default and for a modal analysis that's all the setup we need so the only thing to do is hit the running man The dynamic input is then checked and the dynamic analysis then kicks in so you get a list view showing the process here's showing the natural frequencies that have been extracted frequency 15 was the first one above 75 hertz our cutoff and that's it here we see the results so because we only did a natural frequency calculation we didn't run any load cases so there are no load case specific reports available but here we see the general results for the dynamic analysis so we can see as a list view the natural frequencies so our lowest first natural frequency is 9.4 Hertz which is pretty reasonable it's not too bad our systems not too flexible it's not too likely to get excited I would say and what we could also view is we can view the graphical representation the animated version of our mode shapes so I'll maximize that and select the mode shape that you wish to to view let's go for the lowest natural frequency and there I can view the animation so this is how the system would tend to want to vibrate should it get excited at a 9.4 Hertz frequency I hope you found that useful but if you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thank you for watching.